Hey guys, Argon40 has sent me two Raspberry Pi 5 cases, I already have the Raspberry Pi 5, and one of them comes with M.2 NVMe SSD drive support, which I haven't tried before, so I thought I'm going to give it a go and see how difficult it is to boot Raspberry Pi 5 from NVMe. If you want to know a little bit more about these cases, there is a short tech drop on the side right now, but I'm going to have a full review of those cases pretty soon. And as I already covered USB boot on Raspberry Pi 4, I thought that would make a brilliant follow-up, especially I keep using my original article anyway. To get started, you need one of these. This is obviously M.2 SSD, but they are not all the same, and you have to make sure you have a correct one. M.2 refers to a connector standard, it's a hardware specification for these SSDs and you have to make sure that you're actually getting correct SSD in order to take advantage of PCIe's uh, port on your Raspberry Pi 5. Long time ago I covered my experiences with Super 6C, which is a cluster for six Raspberry Pi 4 modules, compute modules actually, that used six M.2 drives but unlike these ones, they were SATA. And since they look almost exactly the same and you can get them into SATA or NVMe, if you want to take advantage of the PCIe Express slot on Raspberry Pi 5, make sure you're selecting the NVMe type. And since I'm already I'm explaining basic, I might as well touch on the, what actual numbers associated with the product listing means. You often see these being described as 2230, 2260, etc, etc. That is a physical footprint. If you take a ruler, you'll see that all those drives are 22 millimeters wide, and then the second pair of numbers will define how long is the actual PCB. So 40 for 40 millimeters, 80 for 80 millimeters. That's it, mystery solved. So please take a look at the description of this video. I'm going to link Amazon product listings for NVMe drives that are compatible with this. If you're watching this, I guess I can assume that at this point you have maybe an Argon 1 V3 case or Argon uh, Neo 5 case with M.2 support or maybe expansion hat that allows you to mount M.2 SSDs to your Raspberry Pi 5. Obviously, you're going to need that. So the first thing that you need to do is to enable your PCI Express port on your Raspberry Pi 5. Board. This is quite simple, you have to do is just navigate to the config.txt file which is located in the boot. Now do bear in mind that location used to be in the boot directory, now it's in a firmware folder. This is something new that I recently discovered, but if you navigate to old file you'll get prompted to go in the right direction. And all you have to do is just define nvme dt param and if you want to specify the Gentry or Force Gentry support, then you'll have to add those two lines to the config.txt file. That's it. Once you do that, your PCIe Express port is enabled. Obviously, for this to happen, you need to reboot your Raspberry Pi once you save the changes. Now that this is sorted, connect your drive to your Raspberry Pi hat or case or wherever you have and install it. Obviously, you want to do it when your Raspberry Pi is powered down. Once this is done, turn on your Raspberry Pi and use LSPCI to check if you can actually see the PCI interface. And at this point, it should also display the hardware that you have installed in, well, in this case, on my case, it's a Samsung SSD. It means that your PCIe port is working great and you can also verify that your drive is okay by typing LSBLK to see your partitions. At this point, your storage isn't partitioned, so we're gonna jump on that next. So type in sudo fdisk followed by your drive designation and you can use the shortcuts N to create new partition, P to create a self-select primary partition and W to write or save the changes. In the process, you'll be asked also to create multiple partitions if you want to, just bear in mind you'll have to specify how big the partitions are. Once this is done, you can still use lsblk to confirm that everything worked okay and this time around you should see your partitions. Nice, we nailed it there. Before we jump to the next step, we have to open a Raspi config 
and actually change the boot order. We can do that by accessing the advanced options boot order and selecting NVMe slash USB boot as your primary boot device. Make all the changes, but don't restart your Raspberry Pi just yet because we want to write the image stored on the SD card right now onto the drive before we do that. And the easiest option to do it is probably at this point with the DD, which is gonna take the content off our SD card and copy it byte by byte to the NVMe drive. Now, it takes approximately five to seven minutes, depending on how big is your card. The smaller the card, the quicker it's gonna be. But since the command includes the progress, you'll be able to monitor that. And when this is over now, you can reboot your Raspberry Pi. And if everything went well, you should boot from NVMe. Exciting. And if the quicker boot wasn't enough of an indication, you can also use LS PLK to list all the partitions because it will actually show you which partition is selected as a boot partition on that particular boot. Congratulations, you've done it. It was this simple. Now, if you want to revert it back, the easiest option is actually either to go to Raspberry Pi config, again, select a SD card as your primary option. But since that option to boot from NVMe only works when there is NVMe inserted, once you unplug it, it should automatically revert to the boot from SD card. So there you have it. You don't really have to do anything. Now I have a one terabyte of storage in my Argon 1v3 case, which happened to be a perfect media case. So do let me know how you're gonna use this and how you're gonna take advantage of that fast and probably bigger storage on your Raspberry Pi setup. Let me know what storage you went after as well, because I want to know how much storage do you put onto your Raspberry Pi 5 devices. As for now, guys, I do not have a posting schedule. If you're interested, what next? Well, we use YouTube to tools provided. And there's a couple of uh, social media links listed down below as well for your convenience. So hit me up in there and let's start talking. Big thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Thank you.